Hey everyone, it's great to see you again today. Tonight at 6.30, you're invited to stream a time of music with Amanda Cox, Allison Young-Reeser, and Becca Brennan. Because of the threat of weather, uh, the event will be streaming only. I want to remind you that the church library is now open on a reservation basis with one family unit per hour in order to maintain safe practices. Call the church office to make a reservation. We had a wonderful time worshiping outdoors last Sunday, and we look forward to doing so again this Sunday. We sang, we prayed, we read scripture, I preached. In preparation for this outdoor gathering, I want to make you aware of a couple of changes. First, in order for us to be ready for the streaming service at 10 o'clock, the outdoor worship service will now begin at 8.30. So please note that. We begin the outdoor worship service Sunday at 8.30. Second, in response to a request we made, the governor's office has given us freedom to expand our limits beyond 50 people. So if you weren't able to sign up last week, you should be able to do so this week. And third, we have determined that we have a lot more space for more people if we meet in the parking lot on the south side of the church. The stage will be positioned on the playground and we will have squares painted into the parking lot. We will have spaces reserved for cars as well. Uh, you will want, probably want to bring chairs to sit in since most of the seating will not be in the grass. Please remember that masks do not need to be worn while you're in the seating area, but do need to be worn anytime you're outside of that area. In order to help us plan, please make a reservation for a seat or for a vehicle, either by using the church website or by calling the church office. The streaming service will begin as usual at 10 o'clock, and in both services I will be preaching from Psalm 146, at thinking about the, the idea of refine, redefining worship. I don't know about you, but as we move further and further into the months of this pandemic, there are days when I feel overwhelmed. We, we try to keep a positive attitude. We try not to let discouragement drive itself too deeply into our souls. But sometimes it feels like we're sinking in quicksand. In addition to all of the decisions we're having to make right now that we've never had to make before, Questions race through our minds. Uh, when will it end? When will the pressure ease? When will we be back to normal? And perhaps the most frustrating part is that I don't think any of us possess the answers to the questions. But I keep thinking about them nonetheless. But in my pondering, a couple of ideas have come to mind. I find it important to remember that troubles and struggles, frustrations and uncertainty are a part of living in this broken world. I also know that God's people are never promised immunity from the troubles and the struggles, the frustrations and the uncertainties of living in this broken world. And I also know at the deepest level of our being, one truth continues to emerge, that God can be trusted. And, and we know this and we know it's true because we see this truth engraved on the pages of Scripture from beginning to end. I've been reading through the book of Genesis the last couple of months, and Genesis is really one of my favorite books in the Bible. It is so real. Sometimes it's more real than I want it to be. And there is this sense in which Genesis reveals the gospel into all of that realness. On the first day of my reading, I saw something that I hadn't seen before, or at least I hadn't really thought about it before. Listen to the first two verses of Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. I had never really explored the Spirit hovering over the surface of the waters. I mean, what does that mean? Why would the Spirit do that? What's the point? The word hover is not used, that word that's translated hover is not used very often in the Old Testament. It's used in Deuteronomy 32, 11, like an eagle that rouses her chicks and hovers over her young, so the Lord spread his wings over his people to take them up and carried them safely on his pinions. It's also used in Jeremiah 23, 9. The prophet says, my heart is broken because of the false prophets, and my bones tremble, hover. I stagger like a drunkard, like someone overcome by wine, because of the holy words the Lord has spoken against his people. In both cases, 
The word carries a sense of parental, I mean, you might even say motherly concern for God's people who are helpless. And that got me thinking, is it possible that this is the Spirit's role in creation? That God's creative genius is not just his power to separate and to bring into being, but also his loving compassion and grace in separating and in bringing things into being. I think it's one more sign of how different God is compared to the gods that the peoples of the ancient Near East around Israel worship. God doesn't create because he's been manipulated or punished or cajoled. God doesn't create because of some accident. God creates in love because he wants to, because he desires to. He creates in love like a parent bears a child in love. This idea makes sense to me because this is how God treats his creation from that moment on. Everything God says, everything God does for his creation is as a loving parent. Compassion, mercy, honesty, discipline, all of which is done for the purpose so that his children will succeed and flourish and know the joy of life in him. From the moment God initiates creation, even before it, the Spirit is present to communicate God's loving grace, His watchful care. I think this is at least in part what Jesus is telling us when He declares, if you who are far from perfect love to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit? I have to tell you, this is a word that I need to hear right now. I suspect it might well be a word that you need to hear right now. Whatever fears we may feel, whatever burden may be weighing upon us, whatever anxiety may hound us, remember that God is our loving, heavenly parent who is always with us, who is always for us, who is always faithful to us, and who is always worthy of our trust. Oh God, in these tumultuous times, in these times in which we struggle with so many emotions about life, remind us of who you are. Fill us with the joy of your presence. And as our loving heavenly parent, hold us close and give to us the peace of your presence this day and every day. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining me. Have a wonderful day.